the past two years has been a great experience and then it's been great games and I think it's a little rivalry that we have going on and our players get hyped for it. Yeah, and the fans get hyped for it too. Sherilyn, Donna, it was a big one, but Sherilyn came out big. Once again, the offense, everyone knows about it. Anyone who touches the ball usually gets more than 10 yards. Diego Chrysler doing it at quarterback again without Lance Madden, but that Sherilyn defense held Donna's rushing game down to almost nothing. Aldo Silva under 50 yards. Sherilyn gets it over Donna, and uh, Joe, what Sherilyn's defense is doing is almost as amazing as what their offense and their special teams is doing. Uh, no one thought they'd go into Donna and hold them down that far on the, on the rushing yards. I wouldn't have thought so either until what they did to Economides. And at that point, that's when I became a believer that this defense can do just as much as the offense, and that's scary. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's the, they're real. And that's the difference between this Sherryland team and maybe Sherryland teams in the past, right, Armando, is that the defense is just as good, can get just as much done. Maybe the offense doesn't have, you know, an Estefan Castillo or, or you know, a Trace Barrera, but everybody else is as good, and the defense is better. And they kept them in this game against Donna. You know, they came out slow with those turnovers. It was, what was it, a 10-7 game at the half? That's right. They kept them in it to, to give that offense time to get jump started and no, we know the end result after that. Yeah, and meanwhile, you talked about Economides, Joe, and what they were able to do against Juarez Lincoln in it, and what was a must-win game for the Jaguars. And what Coach Pena has been saying is that his team is getting better at these must-win games, that his team now knows what to do in these must-win games. And beating Juarez Lincoln puts them in where they want to be, in playoff position. Take a look at the standings, and there you have it. Economides at 3-2. and two. Yes, they and Donna are behind, a half game behind Edinburgh. Vela, but Vela has not played Edinburgh North. They have not played Sherryland. That means Vela is in a little trouble. But uh, but Vela always has Eber Lopez, and they have Eber football. <laughs> this guy just sat on the bench against La Jolla Palm View, and they were down. They did not score, did the Sabercats, until Lopez comes in in the second half. Joe, this kid does it all. They call him Eber football there at Vela. What do you think about uh, what he was able to do against Palmview? Well, I'm telling you, it was real easy to find highlights for this one. All you do is <laughs> click on the second half. If they snap the football, then he gave you a highlight. He ran the ball. He passed the ball. And what a difference maker he is. Coach Salinas wanted to keep him out for precautionary measures for, for maybe an injury. He sure didn't look injured there. <laughs> no, he didn't. I mean, this kid did it all. I hadn't seen the film on him until right now, and wow. Yeah, uh, he, he was incredible. Another guy we got film on for Edinburgh. Yeah, how about how about Christoph Martinez? I like to just call him Christoph, like he's a soccer player. He nailed two 50-plus yard field goals uh, against La Jolla. A huge wins in the 13-0 win. Edinburgh's defense gets it done again. And this guy, it's what he does. He kicks these field goals, Mondo. Yeah, he's been doing it for a couple of years now. You know, I, I thought he was already graduated, and he's still around kicking field goals 50-plus. So kudos to him. Unbelievable. Teed that one up from 52. Yeah, and he could have <laughs> done it from longer. We are coming right back. Going to finish up. Going to talk a little 3A football and a couple of surprises. It's all when we come back. <laughs> 